And you know what? We are at time, and I love to get started on time. So let's jump right into it, Bob. You got it. Welcome, everybody. This is another episode of Let's Develop. I'm your host, Chris Woolley. And today we have Bob Coates. He's going to be presenting the program Zen and the Art of Camera Care. And yes, it is just as much fun as it sounds, especially for those of you that know Bob. So a uh, couple of things before we get started. Um, in case you aren't familiar with what is Let's Develop, it's a webinar series brought to you by American Color Imaging. And basically every other week we find an awesome photographer and they share information with you so that you guys can learn, we can grow as an industry and just have a whole bunch of fun. So uh, thank you so very much, ACI. Uh, for helping make this possible and connecting all these really, really cool people together. If you've missed previous episodes of the webinars, you can still watch them. If you go to acilab.com slash let's dash develop, um, you can see the replays. So we've got uh, Rachel uh, Bohr from IPS Mastermind. She was on a couple of weeks ago, nine free ways to market your photo business. Um, so definitely go check that one out. She had a ton of information on ways that you can start marketing your business. So go ahead and uh, check her out. Uh, this is a webinar format, which means that we're live. We can interact and ask questions and tap into the brain of Bob. Um, so if you do have <laughs> questions, there's a little chat box. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure which area, where I point, but a little chat box off to the side um, with a question mark in it. If you have a question, type it in there as an actual question and you can actually vote on those. So if you have that same question, give it a little upvote. So we know that lots of people have that question and we'll be uh, answering them in orders that they are ranked. Uh, but uh, Bob's a, a pretty generous guy in terms of a lot of information to share. Um, so give him really, really hard questions and we'll give him a hard time and everybody will have fun. Uh, so uh, it should be a, a pretty good time there. Just make sure that we're using that chat box um, and typing in on uh, the comment section so that uh, we can interact and engage because that's a lot more fun to do. All right. So with that, uh, we are going to uh, introduce Bob Coates. And uh, yep, we can see him up there. Bob is an amazing photographer, got started in the mid 90s. He was a, a Caribbean photographer, I believe, or living in the Caribbean. And he uh, was doing commercial work and then some wedding stuff. And then he kind of moved over to what, Arizona. And uh, yes, sir. Arizona, yes, my parents live there. Uh, so moved to Arizona, at, not in Sedona with him, but uh, uh, started doing more commercial work, wildlife, doing fine art sort of stuff. Um, he lens-based artist is, I believe, the phrase that you use, right? Uh, just in terms of being super, super magical and still uh, keeping it true to uh, the photography art form. Uh, so using that as inspiration that goes through. He's presented programs all over, uh, including at Imaging USA. He's a master uh, photographer, master artist, photographic craftsman, certified professional photographer. He's got the EA from the ASP. Um, and what are all those awards behind you? I can't quite read that far. <laughs> <laughs> um, but man, he is quite yeah, accomplished. I, I have been very fortunate. Uh, he's a judge and just an all around great guy. Uh, and he's going to be sharing tips with us today. So I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing my screen and let's get Bob up here and uh, take it away, Bob. All right. Um, okay. I'm seeing me as a little guy here and you as a big guy there. So uh, you well, might want to switch that, I think. I have no, I'm just making you full screen big. There we go. There you go. Okay. So weirdly enough, I, I talk about, I'm going to just really use a lot of esoteric things like um, how do you care for your batteries? Let's start with there because we need to power our gear. Um, and one of the things that I've found is if you, there we go. If you mark your batteries, for example, A, these are A, B, and C, when the battery comes out of the camera, whatever it is, the next one in line goes in. This keeps your batteries rotating around uh, because if you don't rotate them, you can, you know, they all look the same if you haven't marked them. And one can just sit there and, you know, pretty much expire on you. So keeping your batteries moving. Um, one of the things that I also do is, um, you know, a lot of your batteries will come with a little case. So in this particular case, we've got a nice little case for it. It protects the contacts and keeps it looking good. Battery's still marked inside as a power in this when, you know, make sure you know whether the battery is powered up or not. When I'm not using these in the cases, I use a rubber band, just a real small rubber band 
um, you can take and put over the contacts on the on the uh, battery. So now I know that this battery is hot and the contacts are safe and good. And That's then clever. once I use the battery and pull it back out of the camera, then I change the orientation of the rubber band. Now I know it's a dead battery. Just, and then of course you always wanna have extra batteries with you for whenever you're working. All right. So after the battery, then it's time to um, maybe take care of your sensor. Um, the best way to deal with dust spots in your camera is not to get any in the first place. <laughs> um, <laughs> you laugh, but I am very serious. Um, so, so basically, when you're, when you're working with your camera, a couple of things to keep in mind. And again, some of the things I'm going to talk about may seem pretty simple, but sometimes when I share them, people are like, oh, you know, I never thought of that. When you're changing your lenses, don't hold your camera in the upright position. Um, if you have the opportunity, go ahead and blow off your lens before you do it. Or if you're in the field, take your lens cloth and just give it a quick wipe. That'll kind of keep the, uh, you know, whatever dust is sitting up there, that'll clear that off so it doesn't have a chance to go in. And again, you uh, many people change their lenses like this because they want to look and see what they're doing. If you do that, once you take the lens off, that lens is now allowing gravity to drop in. So always, when you change your lenses, keep your camera pointing down. Um, you know, something simple, something easy. Um, Let's see. Oh, okay. So another way to uh, stay on there, if you do notice you have some dust spots, the first thing you want to do is many of the cameras today have an automatic sensor shaker. Um, I know in my, my Olympus cameras, every time I turn the camera on and off, it goes and will knock off any anything and it has a little trap in there and stuff. Um, but if it doesn't clear everything out, again, holding the camera so that the uh, lens opening is facing down. Oh, and when you when you first pull this out of your camera bag, you don't want to x. You don't want to start blowing straight away, just in case there's some dirt in here. Give it a couple. Whoop, 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 whoop. <laughs> just like with tongs when barbecuing, right? Got to give it a test place. Exactly. exactly. So we're gonna go in here and we're just gonna go. Um, and then this is a uh, rocket blaster. Uh, so one thing to just to let you know to remote to let you know that I am sending or Chris is going to send out a uh, resources page from almost everything that I'm talking about. Unless we you know if we go down some some weird road along the way, you don't know. But there'll be links to kit and gear. Some of the links will get you some deals, and I'll tell you about those. Some of the links just get me some stuff because I'm an affiliate. Um, but it helps you know helps helps going. So Support when you go to put your lens back on. Of course, you'll give it a little blow. And once again, keeping your lens pointing down, you're in good shape there. Okay, so we've taken it out. How do you know whether you've gotten all the dust off of your lens? Okay, one of the easiest ways to do it is to put on a little longer lens, focus on something, zoom way, you know, zoom way far out, Focus on something that's pretty far off in the distance, like a mountaintop or a building that's way off as far away as you can. Lock the focus on that, and then just tilt the camera up to the sky. Get a, get a basic blue sky. And then once you have that basic blue sky, you're going to see any dust. So let's go take a look at that just for a second here. See if I can find those files that I dug out and set into good places. Man, no, not you. How many of you in chat uh, currently uh, follow those practices for sensor cleaning? But yes, I do, or no, I don't. That's that is a good question. No, right. I didn't know I needed to do that. Uh, you know, right? It's, it's like it's. I, I'm, I'm guilty. You know, like I say, it's wanting to look at that sensor. We can really make a big difference. Uh, That's pretty even here. split. Looks like we got some new techniques to do. All right, <laughs> Cassandra. Uh, a good way to find dust spots is start working on a competition image. Uh, oh gosh, <laughs> <laughs> that's the other way. Absolutely. Uh, let's see. I thought I had this open already. We're almost there. 
Uh, let's develop. There it is. Okay. So let's do a before and after. Cool. And you're not currently sharing your screen. I'm about, yeah, I'm about to. I just wanted to um, get them ready to go. And now we'll go to screen share. Share that one there. Finder, and now we'll open this up. So when you look at that, oh, that must be the after one. I'm not seeing. Okay, it might there. Um, oh, might, there we go. Okay, might yep. be a little delay, like a hair of a delay that no, usually. No, no, I had to, to yeah, full screen on there. I had to override it. I thought it would do it automatically. Okay, so when you look there, this is after I cleaned it. It's pretty darn good. We got oh, got a couple little boogers down here. Um, here was before. And still got a booger down there. Okay. So how do you really tell if they're there or not? Uh, I'm going to fire up both of these. I'm in Adobe Camera Raw right now. I believe you have the same type of things in uh, Lightroom. You can go to the, um, the healing tool. And once the healing tool is, is activated, if you look right here and just underneath there, there's a thing called Visualize Spots. Click on that. Oh, look, we got a booger there. We got a booger there. Got another one over here. So anything that's white, it will set it up so that you can really see. So this is the after. I have one little one left there. But here is the before where you can see them. Now, are these big enough to really worry about? Not too much. But this is a way to know for sure when you go with a, you know, a, a straight blue sky works really well. That makes sense. Fascinating. Yeah. Okay. You can do the same thing. You can open up the file as well in Photoshop and do a um, do a curves and just crank the curves, you know, in different ways and stuff. And those things will pop up as well. So let me get back to uh, Chrome. And now I'll let's say I don't want to share that anymore for now. All, All right. right. So and you're back full screen for everybody. Hey, how we doing? It's me. Yeah, so right. uh, I think that uh, uh, let us know in chat. But uh, uh, are you? Is everybody seeing Bob full screen right now? Even if he's sharing his screen, because I think if I can just control it this way, life just got easy. Yeah, we are. I can go back and forth if you want to leave share screen up, and then. Okay. Well, then yeah, then I'll probably do that next time I open it up. Okay. Now, how did I? I forgot to show you the really cool way. How do you clean those spots off of your sensor? Once it's open. Um, you have your camera now at this, at this point, you have to have your camera facing up, but you're going to be dealing with it. You try and clean, you know, be in a relatively clean area to begin with. Um, it's good to have some light so you can have your camera open and okay. So this is a little headlamp and the headlamp can be turned so that you can push it down. Let's see. Let's put that on. So you can look down and you can have light shining in your sensor and not have to worry about your hands holding on there. That's that's really handy because when you try and hold a flashlight, then you're working with some other stuff. The other thing is after you've blown it out and checked, let's turn this back off. Um, we also <laughs> you don't want to flash us anymore, Bob. No, no flashing. Um, we also, you know, as we talk about different things in case I forget. This is great for when you're out shooting Milky Way or Starscapes and stuff, because you can um, use your, have your hands free, have your way lit in front of you. Um, and these cost about maybe, mm, depending upon which kind you get, anywhere from 10 to 50 bucks. The 10 buck ones work just fine. Um, I like the ones that have a replaceable battery versus a chargeable one, because then you can carry an extra battery in your bag. Um, that's kind of cool. So that's that's nice to have in your camera bag all the time anyway. Um, but back to cleaning the, let's see if we can see it. This is called eyelid, E-Y-E-L-E-A-D. And what the eyelid does is it has this little stick. This is probably the coolest way I saw of ever cleaning my gear. Matter of fact, I went through it today and I found something, I found a a uh, fault in one of my sensors that I'm going to have to send in to get fixed because it wouldn't clean up and it had nothing to do with any of that. Anyway, here's this little stick and you see the little, see the little blue, 
the little blue right there, that's just a soft little stick or soft little thing on the end of a hard stick. And then it comes with these little, little pads. When you peel this pad back, there's a sticky surface on here. And then all you do is you touch it there. That kind of activates this getting sticky. Then you go to the camera sensor and dip, dip, dip. And you've already got a map if you've done your uh, picture of the sky and use the thing there. So you can look and say, oh, there's one going to be there. Oh, yeah, I see it. Bump, bump, bump. And then you're right, you're right there. Then you go back to the sticky pad, hit this again on the sticky pad. It will pull off those things. Um, but then um, you can go back in and, and get whatever other dust may be hanging out. Um, at some point, if you're at a spot where you're, you're really full and these two little tips with the blowing off and the camera sensor shake and the eyelid, this is, this is my favorite. I mean, I've had probably 20 different, well, 15 different kits for cleaning sensors. This thing has been number one in my book. And again, I've got that um, on a uh, list in your thing there. What else do we want to keep clean? Who else has trouble finding or holding on to these things? I think there's a, like an anti-magnetic force that whenever I take an, a lens cover off of my um, Michael was asking if I asked for, if I recommend a static brush, I really like this eyelid. It's just, um, I never had luck with this, that with the, uh, with that one. Um, but lens covers, oh man, what a pain in the butt. They just disappear. So they cost a pretty good penny, right? Well, I'm going to show you something that's pretty darn cool. Grab one of my cameras from back here. <clears throat> Anybody hang out in their kitchen? All right, let's pull this guy in just a little closer here. Push this one out there. And one thing you can do and keep with you, these are inexpensive, is flip your lens cover around or your lens shade around. And look at this, a little piece of silicone with some tabs on it. And you just stretch it out. Pull it right there, pull the tab over the edge. And these little jar covers now protect your lens. <laughs> and it's cool. It's not hard, but to me, it's awesome. And if you wanted, you could leave your lens shade out the other way. And these things cost like maybe 10 bucks or 11 bucks for a whole bunch of them. And you put the rest in the kitchen if you don't need that many. But anyway, that's just one of my little hacks for trying to keep my gear clean. Let's see. So what else do we need to do when we're out in the field? We need to support our cameras. Um, camera support means better photos. I was always the guy who was, <laughs> I'm going to leave my tripod in the car. <laughs> I don't care. It's too much of a pain in the boot. Um, tripod technology has gotten so much better over these years. And weirdly enough, when, especially when I uh, switched to micro four thirds, there's a tripod that allowed me to make photos of cathedrals in Europe. I know it sounds strange, but having just even this little guy on your camera allows you to number one, support it on the floor. And surprisingly, these will hold, you know, a fair amount. You could put it on a chair. You could put it up higher. You could hold it up against a tree or a wall or set it on a car hood. It's just that one little extra piece. These can, you can get about five or six of these for six or seven bucks on Amazon. Um, it's just a little tiny tripod. Who makes that, uh, Bob? Um, I don't know. Internet? Just look up tripod, you know, mini tripods on, uh, and actually, okay. um, I don't know if I have that one in this resource list. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but it's uh, but they're they're pretty easy to find. Let's see, uh, tripod, tripod, tripod. No, I don't see it there. So I'm gonna say I don't have that one available for you. But they're pretty easy to find if you don't email me, Bob at bcphotography.com. Um, but again, these are just real. I mean, it's it's just a dinky little thing, but it's surprisingly just that little piece of kit you can keep in your bag and not worry about. 
So I'm going to work my way up from tripods because we always, again, need to support those cameras. So the next one on the list, and another thing to uh, keep around, is um, carabiners. Carabiners are awesome. Michael already dug it out. See that? You find it? Hey, look at that. We got a good crowd. Go. That's just, yeah, that's just one of them. There's a, there's a bunch of different ones. And again, they're not anything super fancy, but they work cool. So carabiners are great. Why would you have a carabiner? Carabiners are for carrying extra kit. So you can hang a uh, tripod. Oh, a tripod. Did you see, Bob? Is that a tripod? Yes. It's called a platypod. <laughs> and I'm going to start with a smaller one. They make them in different sizes. And by the way, I am a platypod ambassador. So I get to uh, get in on their gear early. Um, I had bought one of these. And all it is is just a little plate. And on the little plate, let's see. Okay, so the carabiners. See how we use the carabiner? It just hangs the platypod, hangs its extra feet in the little pouch there. Um, on the carabiner also is the a little extra lens cloth that's just kind of hanging out there. Uh, these days I carry a mask on my uh, other side there, and then we could have extension tubes or um, ex you know tele extenders in the other little bag. So this little bag right here, um, especially if you're in micro four thirds world, um, this carries all my kit to go out and and play in the woods and go hiking and not have a lot of heavy gear. <clears throat> that's a think tank bag by the way it's called a mirrorless mover and i've had that thing and it's been through the wars i've had that for probably five or six years and just really beat beat the heck out of it so um and it's and it's in that almost pristine condition it's got a little little uh little tiny change or a little tiny scrape on there Okay, tripods moving on. So with, with that little platypod, because it's so small and so easy, um, the, the, um, you can take whatever tripod head that you happen to have because it's got the, the, uh, the uh, re receptor right there. So if you have a, you don't have to get a tripod head from them, although the one I just showed you is actually pretty cool. Um, I'll show you that in a second. But so whatever whatever tripod head you want to put on there is perfectly fine. If you have a bigger camera. This is they have, the reason they have two sizes is because sometimes you want to support lights or heavier cameras with long lenses. Um, you can really carry it out. This particular the Platypod Max they call it has um, the little feet built into a little plastic guy that's on there. You can change the height of it or, you know, put different screws, in, you know, different number of screws in there. Um, it has uh, sharp pins. Ouch. Um, I highly recommend if you get these, take a little metal file and give that a little touch because <laughs> they will stick you. Um, is that, that experience one... talking there, Bob? What's that? Is that experience talking there? Oh, that is experience talking. And they said, oh, no, that never happens. I'm like, mm, I don't think so. Anyway, um, so having having those different things. Now, the other part is when you're working in the studio, you can add a gooseneck and screw into that same type of hole. And then you can have a set of hands where, let's go ahead and screw it in a little bit. So now I can do some macro work and put the lights exactly where I want. We got, you know, this is a double gooseneck right here. And so we could, you know, mount them both up there. The camera's on the, uh, you know, on the uh, head. And then we've got, you know, so, oh, maybe if I move back. Hey, good idea. So anyway, you get the idea there. I'm not going to beat some of this stuff to death. But those are little, these are little Lytra lights. And they go on the goosenecks. So, and when I first got, when I got my first platypod, I thought, oh, that's a really cool idea. And then I took it out and used it maybe twice. And then I put it away and I just never saw it again for the longest time. And then for some reason I started pulling it back out. And then I just realized with the way this is manufactured, 
and all of the little different holes and such, it was so, it was, I kind of think of these guys as my MacGyver tools. I kind of do all sorts of fun little things with these. So this is the tripod. This is the head that I was talking about that they sell. It's a Benro and watch just one little twist and you get all directions and everything going. And then one little twist back up locks at home. So it's kind of a nice little thing. This thing supports up to 11 pounds and um, pretty cool little piece. Uh, by the way, I do have a 15% discount for you for any Platypod gear that you get. Let's see. You got one more here. This is the latest that they're coming up with. This is called the Platypod Elite. And it has a different way of it's put the ball head down below and it puts everything else up on top. So the camera can rotate over top of, let's see, do I have any battery in there? Yeah. So if you can see, it's got a little leveler in here when it opens up. Okay. So in the little leveler, once you have that level, when you spin this, it's perfectly level because it's up above. It doesn't matter if your legs are a little bit askew. That's kind of a cool little deal. Um, makes a big difference when you're out there playing. The other beauty about this is that it's pretty tight. There's not arms sticking off of it. And these little buttons lock it down or loosen it up. And when you lock this down, one of the problems that I've always had with ball heads when I'm out doing um, nature stuff is you end up, you set your thing and then you, you let go and then the camera goes, it just does that little, oh, it just falls in just a touch, um, which really is a pain in the butt. When you lock this down, this ball head locks tight and it's very easy to do that. So that's kind of a cool, cool little piece of kit. So also the stuff they have is they have straps so you can strap that's set up so you can strap this stuff to a tree. I've strapped them to the rooftop of my car to do uh, rolling videos and things like that. That's been kind of cool. Let's see. Okay, so we're talking a little bit about tripods. Let's go to the next thing is having plenty of these. I used to sit there and change my my plates with the these are all Arca Swiss compatible and they all come in different sizes and shapes and for different reasons. You notice this one's an L bracket and I'll show you why this is kind of important on one of my tripods. Um, but in general, I like to have a plate that's a little bit longer so that you can reposition the camera on the um, on the top there. You can slide it over to one side, one of the other sides, kind of nice. Let's see. How are we doing on time there? Oh, 528, really? We're doing good. We're doing good. We're doing good? Okay. Yep. Um, Got to drink some water then. Hydration is important. Especially here in the Southwest. Oh, speaking of hydration, uh, hydro flasks are awesome. Uh, I have put these in the car, the white ones, don't get the black ones. Um, I've put these in my car when the when it's like 100 degrees outside and had no ice cubes or anything, just cold water in there. And the next day, I was able to have cool water. It wasn't cold, but it was still cool in a car that, you know, the temperature can get up to, you know, hundreds of degrees. So that brings me to another little piece of kit that's, you know, stuff that you may have laying around that can be helpful for you. This is an old lens case from low pro. So all I do when I'm going out is I stick this on my back hip. That's it. There we go. Mm -hmm. And now when I'm hiking around, I got my water right there. <laughs> I know it kind of seems kind of weird, but I kind of share all my fun little things. And I, I found this to be really, really handy. <laughs> And I'm going to bet that you probably have one of these laying around that's not doing anything. At least one. At least. <laughs> well, they wear out a little bit faster when you're pulling water in and out of them all the time versus being a lens case. So uh, having more than one won't hurt. Uh, let's see. You were going to show us the uh, L bracket on your camera, too. Okay, L bracket. So let's go, let's go over here to this tripod. Um, 
Uh, do we have a lot of nature and wildlife photographers? Yeah, if you do nature or wildlife, put it in the chat. Let us know. Um, because I'll I'll either spend more time or less time. I see a lot of portrait photographers in there, but um, a lot of the things that I'm talking about are are nature. So, yeah, we're getting a, a pretty good uh, group of the crowd that is. Okay, so when you look at this, this is my this is when I talked about tripods and being really cool. This one is from Photo Pro, and I had never again. I was never really a tripod head. But when I came, when I went to a convention in, in uh, Las Vegas at WPPI, I, I ran, ran across this one. This tripod is, the legs are set up so that there is no um, degradation. It will not rust. It will, they are waterproof, sandproof, uh, mudproof and stuff. It's, it's the way it's set up is these are plastic and everything's plastic and there's nothing in there. Um, I've had this fill with water dump out the water and instead of having all that little crusty stuff that you get when you're, you know, when you've been, when you mm -hmm. put your tripod into the sea or into the stream, you don't get any of that. So that's for stars, nice stiff sticks for, um, for the tripod. But the real beauty is the head. Oh, wait a minute. What do we do with these things? When you mount your camera on your tripod, this is a real pain in the butt. And I always was like, okay, I don't want it to blow in the wind. So maybe I can wrap it around here somewhere. And Okay. I use now Peak Design camera straps. Look, it's off. That's it's clever. On. It's off. It's, this is pretty awesome. Now, the other thing is when you're hiking around, how many times have you had a tripod, I mean, a, a camera, you know, kind of start slipping off your shoulder? Yes, Chris? Mm, no? Yep. Oh, yeah. All the time. I'm okay. always paranoid about that. Okay. Well, these are set up. They've got a little bit. They've got one side that's slick like our normal ones, like everybody makes. They also have a row of silicone strips on here, which when you put them that way, it grips more. It's not perfect. But man, it doesn't, it's like really a nice change. Now, the, the really cool thing about the Peak Design is you can have the kind of strap that you'd like. We're working our way to that L bracket, don't worry. All right, all right, don't forget about it. I will not, because that's coming up after this. So now if you want to, you know, a thinner strap, I have one here that I use for my, um, for my smaller camera, for my B, my BTS camera, I you know I usually throw throw that over my shoulder and cross it around so you have a light one. But again, these are all interchangeable and movable. So I'm going to hit you with all the Peak Design stuff just because um, I'm going to keep it going in the same thing. If you wanted to switch to just a camera strap, where you have just a little wrist strap, you know, for a different, you know, it's nice to be able to switch these things out. You put this on and click. <laughs> and now you have one that's on on there and just has a wrist strap. Yeah, tied to my camera, tied to the wrist strap. And then here's my favorite one for um, shooting in the city. You mount, this is an Arca Swiss compatible little plate on the bottom. It has the same little, little clips. And then these clips are uh, replaceable. You just, it's just a little loop through. So you got the clip, but then you can um, put this one on. And the nice part about this that I really liked a lot, I, I discovered this in New Orleans when I was on the street and I really didn't want to have a camera strap and have it hanging and have, you know, be in a place where people can grab it real quick. So you just pull it tight and look, you don't have to keep a grip on your camera. It's just, it's, it's a beautiful little strap. And then when you're done, just undo that and slip your hand out. So anyway, just because I think that takes care of a peak. Um, and like, oh, these, stra these straps, when they first came out, um, they were having some problems with them. They contacted me. They saw that I had bought one. They said, Bob, tell us how many of these that you have. We want to replace them all because we found there's a failure point. And they replaced them all, and I haven't even. And they have a wear thing that you can see when this is like maybe getting close to failing. 
I've been using them ever since, and I'm all still on the original ones, and I still have a pile in my bag. So anyway, Peak was really good about that kind of stuff. So back to the Photo Pro tripod. This is a really cool feature. So it's sort of along the same lines what we were talking about with the with the platy uh, with the platy ball. You see that you can set your sticks and then you can level your camera. So there's a, a level. Right is that a there. leveling base that's part of it? Yes. <laughs> I know. That's what I said. I said, are you kidding me? So again, that's level. Perfectly level. The other part about that is if you're doing panoramas or working on stuff, you can remember I talked about having a longer plate so you can slide your camera back. We're going to talk a little bit about panoramas and nodal points and stuff in this as well, because what you want to do is there's a thing called a nodal point. So when if you just hold your camera like this and do your do your pivot while you take your different images, you're going to run into a bit of a problem. So once you've done that, <clears throat> excuse me, um, because when your your software is now, it's not going in the same place. You ever finish out your panorama and you say, go ahead, Photoshop, or go ahead, Lightroom, make the panorama. And it goes, <laughs> I've had that happen more than once. So I learned about the nodal point or more accurately, the light entry point. So depending upon what the... Uh, thing is, and you can test this. And uh, there's a, uh, I've included a, this uh, Yeti's asking about the tripod head. This tripod head is the Photo Pro. This whole tri comes together. Or you could also get the tripod head if you've got a good set of sticks already. Um, so anyway, you're, you're right here. And now remember, we've got this perfectly flat. So it's there. We've also shifted it back off the center. And this is probably closer to the light entry point. And if you do that, your panoramas will be much straighter and much easier to um, put together. And that's just an amazing little piece. So everything is really machined well. So we this also acts as a, um, as a gimbal. So you see how smooth this is. This is almost as, well, actually it is as smooth as a, when you do video and you have a fluid head. It just goes nice. Oh, but wait, we can loosen this one up just a little bit. And now we have both this. If we're if we're not doing panoramas anymore, we can move this forward and balance it. So now that'll sit there. And now watch. Oh, we can track the birds. And it's just beautifully fluid. And you can set exactly how smooth it is. See, it sits, but it's easy to move. Um, the other thing that I thought was really cool is you can point your camera perfectly straight down. Well, that's or cool. Perfectly straight up. Ah! These things are very cool. <laughs> and you, well, Chris, you're laughing, but I'm serious, man. It's no, that is here. that's amazing. So um, let's see. Was there anything else that we needed to see on here? Oh yeah, we were talking about the L bracket. Okay, so when you're doing your panoramas, this this design was built. A little bit more for cameras that have um, the longer lens and that you can rotate. So that's in horizontal position. Now we're in vertical. So once we're in vertical, and yes, there's going to be a full resource list available at the end of this presentation. And I think they're also going to email it to you. So you yep. um, Oh, and I can get you a discount on this tripod. So I'm, a, I'm an ambassador for them. Um, but if you want to, you want the best price that you can possibly get, get in touch with me personally. I place the order for you and it'll, uh, for example, this tripod goes for about $11.49, I believe. Um, I can get it for you for $9.99 and that includes shipping. So <clears throat> just so you know, and, and obviously it'd be less if you're just doing the head or whatever, but we can talk about that later. Um, let's see. Oh, the other thing is when you're doing uh, panoramas, this, this head that's still here, we have two ways to do it. It could be a fluid head, or you can also just, we twirl this knob in a little bit and it goes, oops, turn that one out. And it becomes click stops. So when you're doing panoramas and you wanna overlap your things, you just feel the click, especially when you're doing multiple rows, but you can just feel the click. So 
This thing is like freaking awesome. That's really well thought out. I've never um, seen that brand yeah. before. Yeah. So I'm going to do one thing. I'm going to pull this off of here. So if you have a smaller um, head that doesn't have a rotating lens collar that allows you to go horizontal and vertical, what are you going to do? Because this is set up in this position here where it's there. That's where when we when I was talking about the now we can do our camera in a vertical position that way. Or we can also do it eh, open. Oh, and it's got safety features here too, so that when you've dialed this in, you can undo it. It still won't come out until you press the button and allow it to come through. And I thought, man, that's a real pain in the butt until it saved me from dropping two cameras and two lenses on two different occasions. And I went, that's a really cool idea. <laughs> How much okay. does that tripod weigh, Bob? Uh, about five pounds. And it sits and it fits into a little violin case. It's probably about 22 or 23 inches tall. It's a little thin at the top and then it comes out at the bottom a little bit. Um, it's it's a really nice piece of kit. They've and and the still very stiff sticks too. All right, so we need to keep moving. We do. Here. We're down to about ten minutes. Really? Yep. I told you there wouldn't be enough time. Yes, there is. We'll do it. Okay. So we were talking about the nodal point before. Very inexpensively, you can get one of these guys, and this is from newer newer tech. Oh, look, there's another camera strap. Let's. Just make it disappear. <laughs> and for my next trick. Yay! Gone. Okay, so when we're here, now we have um, the ro rotating where we have the click stops. And then we also have the, uh, the way to get the camera over the nodal point. Very easy. You have a little, little driver right here. Deek, 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 deek. Um, and again, there'll be a video, I'm not a video, but a uh, tutorial that I've linked to in the uh, notes that tell you how to find the nodal point and how to test it and look for it, or the light entry point to be more proper. And the other thing is when you have one like this, you can also do multiple rows because all you need to do is undo that, tilt it up. You're still over the light entry point, but now you can do a second row or a third row or a fourth row depending upon how crazy you want to get and how long you want to spend in, in post. All right. What else we got? Oh, when you're mucking about and kind of putting things together, sometimes it's like, how come I can't get a three eighths or a quarter? I want to move from a quarter to three eighths or three, you know, which one way or the other for about 18 bucks on, on Amazon. You have all of these different. Hold your hand up higher. Yeah, there I'm working on it. I'm working. All right, let me stand up too. Um, you're, you've got all of these different little little pieces. So you have a three eighths to a quarter. Where's the camera? Oh, there it is. Right there. So three eighths to a quarter change there. We have just a quarter in and a bigger piece coming out, and then we have adjustments for the so. All of these little different pieces, I think you can get them for about 18 bucks, and they've come in really handy on commercial shoots when I'm trying to cobble things together and make things. Let's see what we got here. Get back in. I'm not letting these guys get away because they did that once before. Danger, danger, Will Robinson. So you can get little things like this. This guy's pretty cool. I think I have a link to this in my thing. It's got a little three-way. These are normally for like little video lights. But when you do that, you can go in many different directions. So this can go on top of a light stand if you have one of those converters. Or it can go into uh, the uh, front of the platypod, whatever. You know, it's got a quarter on the base on the bottom. It's got a little twister right there. So a lot of little nice pieces that you can do there. Um, Platypod makes in their accessory kit, they make a little extension there. So you could get something, you know, if you want it to be a little bit, a little bit higher, if you want to put a light up there. The nice part about the pods is doing, um, if you want to put some light coming up from the bottom, you know how hard it is to find a light stand that gets almost on the floor. Right. Please go on the floor if you want. 
All right, get rid of that. Throw those away. What else have we got in here? Ooh, 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 ooh. Okay. This is called a Pluto trigger. And a Pluto trigger will enable your camera to do 24 different things via your phone. So you put this on the top of your camera, and then you plug one end into here and one end into the remote jack on your camera, and you can make your phone. So now you don't need a uh, you know piece of wire hanging off to uh, be making images and without disturbing the camera. You can do um, HDR is up to 19 stops. You can, you know, I don't know who's going to do 19 stops, but um, you can set it up to do time lapse. Um, does it work with Sony? Uh, you have to look on the website, Pluto.com, and actually use my link because um, I get something. You don't, but I get something if you, if you do because I'm an affiliate over there. Um, that's one of those ones that's good for me, but I'm turning you on to the idea. Um, it works as a lightning trigger, a sound trigger. You can uh, make a sound, you know, set it up so that if you clap your hands, the camera will fire. Um, <laughs> clap on, yeah. clap off. No. <laughs> <laughs> clap on, clap. No, it's just clap on, clap on. Oh, there clap we on, go. Clap on. Um, let's see. Is it working anyway, like Bluetooth the, the to your phone? Trigger, um, when, you, when you look online, you'll see the lightning trigger alone. If you buy one of those, those are like 175 bucks, aren't they? 179. Um, and that's part of this. Um, uh, if you're doing time lapses in your car, this was kind of cool in, you know, how, when you sit at a traffic light, it's taking pictures. Oh man, I got to take all those out. When you use one of these, it goes by distance. So it uses the GPS in your phone. So if you set it for every 10th of a mile, it'll fire every 10th of a mile. So instead of firing while you're sitting, you know, not doing anything, it won't, uh, won't make any images. So that's kind of cool. Like I say, a whole bunch of different things you can do with this. You can fire your camera by just holding the button down and it'll stay on, stay on, stay open until you take your finger off or you can set it so that it fires straight away. Um, there's like seven different uh, modes just for firing your camera remotely. Um, it also has a, um, what you call it, trigger, you know, with a light. I, I've never used it, but it's the... You, if it breaks the the light, oh, la like a laser type thing, or laser, that's it, laser. Um, let's see. Oh, and it also you can hook that up if you get the additional piece of kit. There's a tube with water in it, and it has a little re uh, runner. It can, you can run your phone, run the uh, from that for doing water drop photography. And if you've seen some of my water drops, it's a pretty cool thing. It's still still a lot of work, still a lot of time, but it's pretty cool. Um, little light in your camera bag again this is you know uh these there's a lot of uh different ones around here i use um uh what's it called falcon f f7 this is called a, a falcon eyes pocket light and it's you know and that's not all that's only a 50 percent 70 percent there you have that's complete great. control you have um you can change any color on here at any time to anything um, I've used these in the studio a lot, but having it in the camera bag with me, um, these go for about 149 I think. They now have a dual one, too, that they call it the flip. And it's that one is um, operable from your phone, so you can have the lights off in the distance there. These are great for light painting at night. Turn them way, way, way down for starscapes when you want to just get a little bit of light in there. Um, I think we're going to do it, Chris. We ready for questions? Sure. All right. So if you do have a question, please put it into the, the chat now and uh, try to stump Bob because, uh, again, he knows just about everything and he's very generous about sharing information. So what do we need? I'm going to see what questions we have so far. Oh, we've already answered all of them. You're just that good. <laughs> well, I, saw, I saw a few of them as they were as they were flying through. Yeah, <clears throat> I've been recording them as we're, we're going. So if you do have a question. Uh, please type it in the chat so that uh, we can go and uh, get, a, get an answer for you. I'm sure I've got more. I think you're leaving everybody speechless here. Or they're, they're have already left because they said, ah, I know all that stuff. <laughs> okay. Well, what's something new that you learned then? If we don't have any questions for Bob or there's not anything that we want to uh, uh, dive into, on that uh, what was your favorite tip that you learned 
Yeah, Bob is clearly the gadget master. I'm surprised too, because I, I would never was. I never was. Uh, so got a question here. Um, when shooting in a high humidity environment, what tips and tricks would you recommend to keep your lens from getting full of condensation? Uh, have it uh, leave when, whenever you're changing from air condition to heat or, you know, from one environment to another, make sure your camera stays inside the camera bag and give it time to act, you know, acclimate right then while it's still in the camera bag. And then after maybe five or seven minutes, open it up and then pull it out. Now, it doesn't help you on a wedding because I've been there where you're like shooting inside and you run outside and you're going, oh, no, 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 <laughs> please. Um, then you just do the best you can. Make sure you have your, um, you know, your cloth. Um, these guys, um, you know, normally I have my regular lens cloths, but you can buy a huge bag of microfiber cloths and I use them. I stick them into, into the, um, uh, in between lenses and cameras and stuff in there and really just keep them around. They're around all the time. So that's, that's kind of cool. I've uh, got a tip from Tim, a uh, quick suggestion, suspend a bag with a carabiner from a tripod to stabilize it. Sometimes. Um, yeah, it depends. Cause, uh, if your bag isn't quite heavy enough, you can actually, if it if it's not so heavy that it's really holding things down, it can actually blow a little bit and, and cause you Ooh, some problems. Some going on. I played with that back and forth. Um, part of that, if you want to keep your tripod as steady as possible, is to <clears throat> do not extend um, this guy. This is now this is this just puts your camera into a whole nother. Even though the tripod is steady. This start. This has a lot more fulcrum for it to move. Keep this as low as you can. The um, Photo Pro doesn't even have um, the center pod to uh, to come up, and that was a reason for that. Uh, question from Jerry: Any suggestions for a travel or airplane backpack? Not specific. It all depends. You know how much gear you're carrying. I know Think Tank does some really nice ones. I haven't really researched that heavy duty because I've just kind of um, be, being micro four thirds. I can sometimes um, when I'm, you know, when I'm traveling, depending upon what I'm doing, if I'm just traveling for pleasure, here's my kit. So I can put this almost anywhere I can head. Sometimes I can even sneak past the gate. I used to be able to sneak past the gate with this on my waist in my two bags, but they were like, that counts as a bag. Put that in your other. <laughs> so. And, Watch out for uh, that. La last question we have from Tracy. Do you think that spider holsters or rapid straps put too much stress on the camera where it connects with the lens? Um, I've never used a spider holster, so I don't know. Um, that's why I use um, these guys with the... Um, um, Brain dead. The, with the peak, peak design, design ones with straps. the... Because yeah. um, the peak design straps work from the regular camera straps. And then they also work from the bottom of your camera with that little plate as well. So um, that's, since I found Peak Design, I really haven't messed around with um, other ones too much. Totally fair on that. So um, I'm going to, uh, uh, oh, let's, looks like we're still, are you, you're, you're still sharing your screen. Do you want to turn that one off so we can? <laughs> sure, I can do that. See you on that. Um, where is it? Um, it doesn't say where I can turn it off. Oh, it should be on your screen. Maybe it's just on. There we go. It did it. I don't know. Oh, okay. something worked. Um, I'm going to turn on uh, in the handout section, which is in the uh, upper right <clears> section <throat> um, of your screen. You're going to see a little piece of paper with a folded thing there. Um, and it's in the chat, too, that you can download all the uh, links and stuff that Bob was showing off today, um, including his uh, links for special discounts, affiliate stuff. Um, so make sure you're downloading that. I'll also send it in the follow up email. That's going to be coming out tonight for you as well so that uh, you can get all those uh, and start drooling over it and saving up the piggy bank to to get all the fun stuff because oh, by the way, when you, love our toys when you go when you go to the um, bottom uh you'll see that there's a hunts logo everything below the hunts logo is through hunts photo video and i found them to be very very um competitive in their pricing and if you've don't find what you think is, is the right price. Um, there's a contact email in there for Noah. Just contact Noah and say, hey, Bob told me to come see you. 
um, you know, get your, get your butt over here. Tell, you know, where's my discount? You know, he'll don't say it that way, but you know, hook up with them. They, nice uh, they yep. very, very good as far as, uh, moving, you know, taking care of me as far as gear goes and, and my, cl and my folks do. So I've got some uh, uh, giveaways to, and a special offer from ACI. So I'm going to put that up right now. I've got 25% off of memory books. And uh, you have to use a special code in order to get that. And that special code is uh, now active on the right side of your screen. Um, so make sure that you're jotting that down. And it does expire on the 16th. So get 25% uh, off. Uh, just by using that code. Um, so now we've got some prizes to give away. I've got a, uh, a mug uh, from ACI. Uh, so we're going to uh, start there and see who's the lucky winner of our mug. And I got to switch screen so I can get into, there we go. I love doing the, the little spinny thingy. And that one's looking like it's Deb. So, um, Deb, make sure that you reach out to me so that uh, I can um, get your address to send you that mug that's on here. Um, up next, I've got a, a T-shirt from ACI. And let's take a peek at that winner. All right. And we're Norman. So Norman, um, I w oh, I forgot to go on. <laughs> I promise I spun it. <laughs> I was just watching it. I hit the wrong screen on there. So uh, Norman, uh, I'll need to know your t-shirt size as well. So make sure you're getting a hold of me on that one so we can do it. And I've got a memory book. Uh, it's not actually the art of Bob Coates. I just made that one up for illustrative purposes here. Uh, but uh, you can make your own art book uh, and name it after Bob if you like. Uh, <laughs> there. Let's see who the winner on that one is. At least you spelled my name right. And that one is Nicole. So Nicole, make sure you're getting a hold of me so that uh, I can get this to you. And um, upcoming uh, stuff that we've got going on. The next episode of Let's Develop is going to be with Dennis Hammond. He's got a journey as a landscape photographer, followed by um, Ella Carlson that's going to be doing a program on creativity. Um, so registration is now open uh, for both of those programs um, on the ACI website. So same place that we've registered for this one. You can go ahead and do that. And of course, if you do have any ideas for future episodes, uh, put them in the chat so that uh, I can get some great brainstorming or if there's a speaker that you'd like to see or email me. That's how we had uh, reached out to Bob on this one is that we got requests from you guys on wanting to know more about these fun bits of gear and camera maintenance and things that we can do there. So if there's something that you want to know, make sure that you're reaching out. And uh, that's officially a wrap uh, for today. I'm going to stop sharing this one and uh, we'll get Bob all big and pretty there again. Thank you so much, <laughs> Bob. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's even in the chat. That's how we know it's real. It says, oh, Bob's so pretty. <laughs> I think it's that glow when you're seeing new equipment, new toys. I don't think I saw that one, but okay. <laughs> I'll throw it, it was there. It was there. I promise. All right. Well, thank you so much, everybody. And uh, Bob, thank you so much again. Be sure to check your email or download that handout section so that everybody has it uh, and can uh, get some new toys to play with. Tools. Tools, 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 not toys. They tools. are not toys. I have to fight with my wife all the time over that. Yeah, tools are, are tax write-off. Toys are for fun, right? <clears throat> yeah, yeah, you got it. <laughs> Use the right. That's the bonus tip that's actually going to make everything pay for itself. If, Use you the right make, there. if you make money with any one of these things, it's a tool. I don't care how much <laughs> you play with it. I love it. All right. Well, have a good night, everybody. Good night. Thanks, everybody, for being here.